I'm Cecilia Louie of Paper Zen. In this video, I'll be showing you how to outline the uppercase letter V and how to create these simple leaves with variegated inner stem and some simple scroll work. And it's so fast and easy to fill up your monogram project for your greeting card. All the letters of the alphabet are in my ebooks, Quilling Uppercase and Lowercase Letters. Visit my blog to download a free template of the letter A and give it a try. The links are in the notes below this video. Please visit my blog to download an update to the pattern lettered V. I've basically moved segment 5 to here, to the right of 4, and just made it a little bit longer here, a little shorter here. And I believe that's going to make your job when it comes to gluing to your surface a little easier. It'll allow you to secure segment 2 and 5 on your work surface first, and then leave you free to deal with 3 and 4. Now for my card, I'm going to be gluing it to a scrapbook card that's six by six inches and it's very efficient. I just cut a scrapbook cardstock in half and then fold it in half. You've got two cards ready to go and there's no wastage. So then I have a four and a half inch square of white on the inside. So I'm going to let you download this template here to use this as your guideline. So four and a half and a six inch square here. Then I added a trim all the way around just because you know the the pink the soft pink here and stuff it, it goes well with the the light pink I have here but there isn't a, a dark red so I just added a simple trim and if you look really carefully you see how clean these corners are I'll be showing you how I do that. So we just start off with the white card stock here first. I've already trimmed a four and a half inch square out and I went to a sunny window and put my template against the window and followed that outline and put my card stock against it, taping it in place using removable tape. Then I came back to my desk and used a dried up pen to use and, and ruler to follow along all these lines and have already put the impression of the letter V onto the card. Let's start by folding along those scored lines. So this is the first strip here and it's this segment here so I'm going to take my cue and bend the paper towards the right. Now I haven't folded it just yet. I'm just going to use my fingers to guide these edges together and then crimp 90 degrees. So we don't want to crimp a little off like that. Don't be careless about that because otherwise when you go to glue to your final surface it's going to make your job a lot easier if, if all those edges are even. So the next fold is downward so I'm just going to simply fold that down and your lighting I'm sure is going to be better than mine. I already know I want to come back up for the letter on the inside part and then one final fold here and that's ready to go. Okay, I mean this one's pretty straightforward. The letter V doesn't pose too many tricks for us, right? But still, it's nice to know step by step, right? Okay, so now those are all ready to go. We can start gluing to our card. I'm going to start by turning my card upside down because my source of light is in front of me so I can see the top of the letter V better this way. Using some removable tape, I'm going to secure a stiff plastic card along the top of the letter V to basically act as a ruler. Next, I'll put some glue on a thin plastic card and smooth it flat so glue doesn't show on the edges of my paper strips. Now I'm going to dip only segment 2 into the glue petal. Don't get any glue anywhere else though. Now we can set that part on your surface. It's really nice having that card there to help guide me because it takes all that guesswork out. Now I can dip segment 5 into the glue and set that in place. Again with the card here I know the top edges are in alignment so it's really easy this way. Okay now I'm ready to glue this part of the strip down. I could do both at the same time. You're certainly welcome to if you feel comfortable with that, but sometimes I just like to keep an eye on one strip at a time. So do whatever you feel is comfortable for you. 
I've already put down my stream of glue and I'm just going to flatten that down. And in this case, because we have such a long, long area, I just want to create my glue puddle in that shape that's going to help me best. And I'm just going to make sure I don't have any glue hanging off the side that might touch my card. So I'm just going to slide this under my letter V and dip strategically. Now remember to gently pull in this direction to make sure that our strip is straight when we settle it down on the card. And I guess technically, <laughs> I guess I'm getting in my own way here, but I need the puddle to go this direction now. So I'm just going to, because it's still fairly fresh, smear in that area there to make sure that's coated. And it's a little harder because I've already got this area here and this area here glued down, but you can still actually lift that strip up onto the glue. And again, if you wanted to do both at the same time, go right ahead. Okay, so now we've just got this strip. And just wanted to point out, if you, if you didn't pull it taut, I just find that there's just, do you see an ever so slight curve in there? So when you pull it taut, do you see how it straightens out? Those little ten like differences can it just somehow your eye subtly picks up those differences. So it's nice to, you know, care about those little details. So I'm just gently tugging this way, and I'm just putting a finger down on this side because you know, I don't want to pull up my, my work or anything. And I'm just going to, while my guide is still in place, I'm just going to align this corner with that corner here. So I'm not going too far this way or too short. It's just so helpful when I have a little ruler to help me out. And I'm just going to place one end first, have that secure, and my left hand is actually pulling it taut. Okay, and now I can pick up a little bit of glue. Now, do you see on one half of the needle, it has no glue. I'm going to use that side to push aside the paper as I smear a little bit of glue just on that edge and then bring those two edges together. Now I can remove my guideline and run the same bead of glue this edge here using the same technique. And always take off the excess before you come back and bring those two edges together. Okay, now you've got your letter V, let's fill it in. Okay, so let's work on these little elements inside the letter V. I just want to explain one thing though and make it very clear. I don't have a template or a pattern for any of this. I just kind of do it all eyeballing. So I would lay my strip on the letter V template and just kind of eyeball how long of a leaf do I want it to be and fold it in half and then follow that line and 
snip that. Then I put a little, little dab, a little bead of glue, just very tiny amount, and bring these two edges together and make sure they stick. And again, both sides here need to match up. You'll make your job to gluing so much easier. And then I took a contrasting color, but you know, complementary, so they go well together. And I'm just going to bring that alongside the red strip and just make it a little shorter, just a tad shorter. And then snip that too. So then you can end up putting that on the inside of your dark red strip. Next I took a crochet hook and I just gently softened in one direction, turn it around and soften in the other direction. And so we've got a gentle S curve going on right now. And then I took a needle tool and just gently pried it apart. And just kind of accentuating those curves and it just kind of opens up that leaf. Now you can certainly choose to take the inside, you know, color out and apply a little bit of glue right to that edge and then put it back in with the red and there you've got a variegated leaf pattern. So then I'll show you how to make this kind of leaf. So I want to take about that much room and just follow that end and in this case I'm going to soften it first before I glue it together so I just soften in this direction soften in this direction but then what I'm going to do on one of them is put an S curve all in half. So a little bit like a, a C curve here and then like a gentle S curve here. So what that's going to do is create a leaf that looks like that. Simple, right? It's not, not too difficult to achieve. I'm just going to glue that edge down, very small amount of glue. and bring those two edges together. Make sure your edges here are aligned while that glue sets. So sometimes when I handle things, you know, the leaf is squished a bit. It's not a big deal. Just kind of run your tool gently along that side, fatten up your leaf a bit. And you can always use the, the tool diameter to you know accentuate the curve that you're looking for and that's how I created that leaf then to create the variegated in there because you know there was so much work going on in there I didn't want to have my pink in the way so you could just gently soften that to be the kind of curve that you're looking for and in this case, I'm actually going to tear the pink because I want it to just kind of disappear inside that leaf. You do whatever you want, tearing or cutting, whatever. There's no hard, fast rule. So just to make sure that stays together, I'm just going to dip just the edge of that into some glue. So that's how I created that leaf there. So I'm going to have these elements here and then with my eye, I'm just going to approximate. So I want the length to be about there and just, you know, give it another inch for the curled part on the inside. So you can just tear that strip there. And I'm just going to soften in an S shape because that's the kind of curve I want it to take. So I just want to add a little bit of curl in there. So I'm just going to soften it up. It's just something I do. I like to pre-soften my fibers before I start quilling. And you see how tight that is? If you've ever wondered how to make it looser, this is what I do. 
I just unravel a little bit and revival again. Here are the elements being glued one piece at a time in sequence. Now that the quilling is all done, we're ready to glue the white card to our background scrapbook cardstock. And generally I tend to unfold this card because if you don't, you see that bounciness, it's going to, well, it bothers me anyway. So I tend to unfold that and just kind of make sure that it lies flat on my surface so I'm not fighting with that. Then our template, I took a ruler and sliced that in half diagonally. Line up the corners and I'm using the same piece of removable tape to make sure I'm not going to damage anything. Now I've already prepared on the back of this card some double-sided tape here and I've kind of picked up the edges on this opposite side to make it easier for me when I go to release it. But I'm going to keep it, you know, covered with the wax because I don't want to get it stuck to here. I'm just going to line up my card and I've exposed this corner here, the opposite side here, and I've exposed it. So I'm just going to line up my card to the guideline and press down. Now you could choose to remove part of the wax and just give you yourself some more adhesive area and make sure that you know it's it's stuck on there really well before you start messing with the rest of the area. We're going to just remove this part of our template now because we know it's all straight and centered. And I'm just going to come back here and release the corner that I already had pre-released. Okay, so I've got, you know, some easy removable tabs here. And so I'm just gonna finish off that one finish off this one and then continue on with these guys. So I'm going to show you a technique to just edge the white card with strips of 1 8 inch paper that is the same shade as this. You see how these strips are a little longer than this white piece? I'm doing that deliberately and you'll see in a minute why. So I'm going to apply glue and just towards the middle of the strip. So I don't want to go from edge to edge. And if there's any excess hiding, like smearing on the side, I'm just going to take that off and, you know, wipe my fingers off of that glue. And I'm going to apply the strip. and just continue that all the way around. Okay, so now that we've got all these areas finished gluing and you're wondering, well, what are we gonna do with all this little leftover bits? Really simple. I'm just gonna lay a metal ruler down and I'm going to line up this corner with that corner. So for me, what I'm going to do is just kind of go back and forth across the corners and the first layer is going to be, you know, it's going to give you some forgiveness because you can see it's kind of working its way loose. And so it took me about three or four passes before that started to come free. So kind of use that as your gauge as you come to do the second strip down below. And so now look how beautifully that corner is lined up. Then, because there isn't any glue underneath these areas, we're just going to apply a little bit of glue. And, and I do mean a little bit because we don't want to have the excess squeeze out underneath. So just enough glue to put that down. Look how beautifully that sets down and it just makes your card so finished. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up, or even better, leave me a comment. I love knowing which tip you enjoyed most, or how it's helped you in your quilling. 
Hearing your enthusiasm is what gives me energy. I'd also love to see your work, so tag me in your photos. 